there is a runaway trolley barreling down the railway tracks. On the tracks, there are five workers who will all be killed if the trolley proceeds on its present course. You are standing next to a lever that can divert the trolley onto a different track, where only one man works alone. If you divert the trolley onto the other track, this one worker will die, but other five workers will be saved. You have only two options. Would you sacrifice one person to save five, or would you sacrifice five people to save one? What is the right thing to do? Thank you very much for taking your time to speak with me today about this fascinating topic, AI, ethics, and technology. A pleasure. For someone who studied philosophy and linguistics for such a long time, what do you think about the recent development and proliferation of AI? So obviously there have been huge developments in AI which have affected all our lives on a day-to-day -day basis made a huge difference to robotics. I mean, there really wouldn't be any robotics without AI. And related to that, there's, of course, the technology of self-driving cars, which philosophers are particularly interested in because, you know, there's the famous trolley problem, which was elaborated by a philosopher at MIT, Judith Thompson. I think the trolley problem is really particularly fascinating because we humans ourselves don't even know how we are going to make decisions if we are in that exigent circumstance at the heated moment. Because I was reading about how to tell what's right from wrong and like what is right for right. me might not necessarily right for my neighbors or my people in a different continent or even on a different planet. So we don't even know like what is right and wrong. It's not necessarily always objective. society and in particular democracies, you know, not everyone in a democracy will agree about what the, the right policy is. Even if we narrow it down to uh, some specifically ethical question, what exactly is the right thing to do in these circumstances? What, ethically speaking, what sort of policy should we adopt? Or alternatively, what does justice demand? You know, at some point, we will just have to agree to disagree or come to some messy compromise about how these things work. Incidentally, you just mentioned something bears very closely on the trolley problem and maybe shows how difficult some of these issues are. So if you ask people, well, what should you do in a trolley situation? Should you flip the switch, saving the five at the cost of uh, letting this other person die? Most people will say, Yes, you should flip the switch, or at least you wouldn't be doing anything wrong if you did flip the switch and let the one person die. So it looks like maybe the principle is, well, if you can do something as a result of which fewer people die, then you should do that thing. Maybe that's the principle. But then if you think about it for a bit, it doesn't seem to be the principle, because here's a, another case you've probably heard Someone is in hospital just to visit their mother, let's say. He is perfectly healthy. There are five people in hospital each of which needs an organ of some kind. One needs a kidney, one mm -hmm. needs a heart, one needs a liver, and they will die unless they get the heart, the kidney, and so forth. And we could save the five at the cost of one if we take this innocent person who's in the hospital to visit his mother and cut him up and distribute his organs to the five. But I think, of course, if you ask most people, well, should we kill the innocent mother visitor to save the five? They will say no. So the principle isn't do whatever it takes to save the greater number, something more complicated. So, but that's just to say that ethics is difficult. It is. I agree that it's not a new problem, that it's, it has been always a problem around us. But then at the same time, with the rise of the big tech that applies the certain ethical standard or decision-making process that's embedded in, in softwares and services 
that has a, such a huge broad impact on our everyday lives. We are expecting certain standards to be met, but we're struggling because we feel we cannot quite pinpoint where it's coming from. The massive division of the society, creation of echo chambers, and all of that is somehow related mm -hmm. with uh, the rise of the technology and the broader use of a certain set of standards that was implemented without having this consensus. So I think I feel like that we are in a hurry to come to societal consensus to minimize the potential detrimental impact of the adoption of the technology. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the problem isn't really one of consensus because there already is a consensus. Everyone sort of agrees that, oh, well, this is bad. But it's just that the bad thing keeps happening because the incentive structures aren't in place to prevent it from happening. So let's take one example that's been in the news very recently. So there's some reason to believe that Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, and in particular, uh, certain bits of AI that Facebook has bolted onto Instagram, which shows users various images mm -hmm. depending on what they've seen in the past and what their interests are. There's some evidence to think that that is just not good for the mental health of teenagers, in particular teenage girls. It causes them in particular to have body image issues and you know, to worry far too much about their appearance and what other people think of them and so forth. So everyone agrees that's bad. So there's a total consensus on that point. The problem is how to stop this sort of thing from happening because it really did happen and apparently Facebook knew that it was bad. I mean, there are some internal documents which suggest that Facebook itself knew this technology was not helping the mental health of young girls. But of course, there was no great incentive on Facebook's part to prevent it. So I think lots of current problems related to AI are actually like that. The issue isn't getting people to agree that this is a bad thing or this is harmful. It's rather putting some structures in place to prevent the harm in the first place. It's in alignment of the, the incentives. Yeah, right. I agree. But then moreover, I think there are a lot of corporate laws in place that actually punishes executives and CEOs of the company if they don't act on maximizing shareholder yep. value yep. because uh, that's their fiduciary duty. And if they violate their fiduciary duty, they actually get punished. So whereas there is no legal policy in place that punishes the team of the executives that they don't really think about the mental health of the teenage girls. As a society, are we demanding kind of change in reviewing our policy? and the incentive structure to do that. I think this is related to what we're trying to do at MIT when we teach the ethics of technology, because you know, lots of the MIT students will obviously go on to be software developers and they'll be employed by Instagram or whatever. And it's easy to think that the whole point of the ethics of technology is just to get these people to be mindful of the consequences of their work when they are employed at Facebook or wherever, and to have some kind of ethical sensibility as far as the consequences of the technology they're developing. But no doubt that's helpful. But it certainly doesn't solve the problem for the reason that you gave, because we have a kind of social dilemma or collective action problem. It's just not enough that every individual person is of goodwill and doesn't want to hurt anyone. The fact is that sometimes the wrong incentive structures are in place. So it's impossible for everyone to collectively formulate the policy that would really be of benefit to everyone. So the pedagogical problem of the ethics of technology is much more than producing individual people who know something about ethics and how it relates to technology. Perhaps it's more about producing people who become good citizens in a democratic society and realize that some kind of collective action, some sort of regulation perhaps, 
or maybe in some cases the free market can solve the problem, but free markets need regulations as well in order to work properly. Right. So it's not really a problem at the level of the individual, but at the level of society as a whole. But individuals add up to make the society. Yes, of course. Yeah, right. Right. So, right. I just mean that if you no amount of producing ethical undergraduates by itself is going to solve these problems. Yeah, it suddenly seems more daunting than I expected. We humans are full of biases and a lot of shortcomings. At the same time, that's the uh, the reflection of our evolution and our experiences, and could be a shortcut that we have learned from years of reporting in a certain environment. How can we tell for sure that the kind of absolute lack of bias is a better strategy or a right thing when the society has evolved to be that way for some reasons?